Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to First Congregational Church of Lowell. I'm obviously not Shannon Han Hanley. She is in Boundary Waters this week. I think they left last night. So I am filling in. So please forgive me. <laughs> um, I just have a few announcements to start with. We are still looking for a moderator or an associate moderator. So if you think that's you, uh, feel free to see me or um, this week, Deb Blakely, and we can hook you up with some information. Um, Open Table is back to indoor dining as of last week. We would love to invite you to join either to eat or volunteer. We always could use more volunteers. Um, there's always a link in the newsletter or on Facebook to volunteer. And if you have any questions about that, I'm sure Lori can help you with that. And then our annual meeting is Sunday, June 24th. Please make sure to join us either on, in person or on Zoom. If you would like to now take a moment to uh, welcome and greet each other, that would be wonderful. What am I supposed to do? July. July. Oh, man. It's July. I wrote it down wrong. Sorry. I'm going to fix it. July 24th. Thank you, Dave. And now if we can meet and greet each other. If you could please stand and join me at the call to worship. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. Do this and you will live. Let's worship God. If you will please join me for hymn number 459.
not have to see you. It doesn't matter your time that the Bible is And that's the problem. It's terrifying. And Jesus tells the story to remind the disciples clearly that everyone and our neighbor, it's our job to take care of everyone, even if they're not like you. So, when I was thinking about that, that reminded me of a situation that Landon and I and the rest of you youth were in when we were in Philadelphia. So, we were in Philadelphia, we were like, no. The scripture reading this morning comes from Luke 11, verses 1 through 13. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, you say, Father, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive our sins. Oops, I'm on the wrong one. Excuse me. Forgive me. This is about forgiveness, right? Good Lord. Amen. Okay, here we are, back again. The scripture this morning comes from the parable of the Good Samaritan. It was in the right book, wrong page. An expert of the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right to answer. Do this and you will live. 
But wanting to vindicate himself, he asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and took off, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling upon, came upon him, and when he saw him, he was moved with compassion. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, treating them with oil and wine. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back I will repay you with whatever you spent. Whichever of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. Here ends the reading. May God transform understanding into action. Amen. And love your neighbor as yourself. And love your neighbor as yourself. The other day I was out shopping with a friend of mine. She was shopping. I was just there for moral support. I have to tell you, the more she shopped, the more I learned. She would say things like, I hate my thighs. This skirt isn't long enough. I hate this shirt and the way it shows my back. She looked awesome in the outfit. She said, oh, I hate how tall I am. I can't wear heels. And love your neighbor as yourself. And love your neighbor as yourself. From the headlines, Putin dares West to defeat Russia on battlefield. Appeals court rejects racial profiling claim in lawsuit. COVID hospitalizations rise. Teen was robbed and teachers attacked. And love your neighbor as yourself. And love your neighbor as yourself. I open social media and I learn 101 ways I can change my color, my outfit, my face, my body. And love your neighbor as yourself. I wonder how we're doing. You know it's really, really hard <laughs> to love your neighbor as yourself. Do you know what makes it even harder? Not fully loving yourself. By the very way in which Jesus shapes this concept of love, Jesus makes it very clear that loving ourselves is the foundation upon which all these other presumably higher loves are built. In other words, those who love themselves are those who are able to love others and love God. There are a hundred ways to take on this text as a preacher. We could preach and teach about the man who was the good Samaritan, what was within him, how he is now the star of these messages, but he's not. We could teach and preach about the expert in the law that stood up to test Jesus, Lord knows there are many scriptures like that where Jesus is being put to the test. He doesn't seem to mind. But I think we need to revisit the simplest, most difficult part of this scripture, the loving your neighbor as you love yourself, that you show mercy not just to your neighbor, but you show mercy to yourself as well. More technical difficulties. Jesus says to be humble. In Matthew 23, you find Jesus telling his followers to be humble and being bitterly criticizing religious leaders for their lack of follow through and humility and their worthiness practice, worthless practices. Jesus said his followers should be like children and little children had no status or importance at all in this day. Jesus says to love your enemies. Jesus says to love God. Jesus says to pray, Jesus says to eat, drink, and be merry, Jesus says to treat the children well, Jesus says women are worthy. So to begin to know how to love your neighbor as yourself, you need to know two things. You need to know what love is, and you need to know that you are loved. 
The Bible tells us this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent us his son as a propitiation. 1 John 4.10, you are the object of God's love. God loves you. Knowing this is what's most important. Not just that love in a general kind of way, but deeply loved, unconditionally loved. And we tap into this when we understand that God first loved us. Even before Jesus gave himself over for us, God loved us. To love your neighbor as yourself, as commanded, you need to measure correctly. The measurement within this command is as yourself. To love your neighbor as yourself, you need to love yourself. This is something that gets misunderstood in the body of Christ often. It gets mixed up with dying to self and denying self as we need to destroy ourselves. But friends, that is not true. Jesus died for each and every one of us. If Jesus valued us long enough to go through what he went through, we owe it to Jesus to value what Jesus values. We need to know what Jesus loves and love it too, us. The Bible even tells us that God loves us so much that he loves Jesus, as much as he loves Jesus. How dare we not love what the Father loves? Learning to love ourselves prepares and helps us to love our neighbors. Friends, loving yourself also means showing yourself grace. Knowing that God is love and that this love is for you is not enough. It needs to be developed. Imagine if you had a field of good soil in a bag of top-notch seeds. Would they produce a crop all by themselves? No. The seeds must be planted and cared for. Grace takes the seed of his love in the soil of the heart and creates fruit for God. The Bible says, it's God who works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Loving God and our neighbor pleases God. Grace helps us to do this. Grace teaches us proper love and respect for ourselves and our neighbors. Freely receiving God's gift of grace empowers us to freely give God's grace. Loving your neighbor as yourself means acting with compassion. When Jesus was asked, who is my neighbor? He responded with a story, the Good Samaritan. Even those who have no love for God can see the value of this story. What is the bottom line of that story? Who did Jesus save was a neighbor, the one who had compassion? Compassion is not simply a warm, fuzzy feeling in our hearts. Compassion does something. A heart that's moved by compassion cannot sit idly by while someone else suffers a need. Loving your neighbor as yourself is being moved to help to the fullest extent of your ability. Loving your neighbor means making allowances for other people's humanity. We live in a day and age when offenses is as common as breathing, criticism is running rampant, love is not easily offended or critical, love does dumb things. No one is always right or knows everything because we are all a work in progress. I remember sitting through a green light. I wasn't trying to inconvenience anyone. I got stuck in a grieving daze because a family member of mine was passing away. I remember that when I encountered people driving too slowly before sitting at lights or even cutting me off, my response would be more aggressive. Maybe they have a reason. Maybe those people, and myself included, are just being human. We're imperfect beings that do dumb things regularly. Giving people the benefit of the doubt is loving yourself and loving your neighbor. For example, I had a lady flailing her arms and cursing because I didn't go through the almost red light. She was behind me and got stuck with the red light with me. I don't know why she was so angry but she may have had other circumstances. So instead of raging back, I prayed for her. Friends, loving your neighbor means forgiving. Forgiveness is a big deal to God. The Bible says he planned for it from the foundation of the world. Jesus frequently spoke forgiveness over others that resulted in the healing of their bodies. Forgiveness is freely given to us, and to love your neighbor as yourself, you will pass that forgiveness on. 
Jesus highlighted this in his story in Matthew 18 when Peter asked how many times he had to forgive. He tells the story of a king who forgave an enormous debt to one of his servants. The servant failed to pass on one of the failed to pass the forgiveness on. He demanded payment of a small debt from his neighbor. When the king heard of it, he had his servant reprimanded for the debt, revoking the debt cancellation. Jesus' story tells us that love always forgives. We all need forgiveness. So loving your neighbor and yourself is learning to forgive. Friends, by the very way in which Jesus shapes this concept of love, Jesus makes it very, very clear that loving ourselves is the foundation upon which all these other presumably higher loves are built. Call what I've shared here as the basics, but in the week ahead, check in with yourself. Have you shown yourself compassion, grace, mercy? Have you forgiven others? Have you forgiven yourself? Have you demonstrated kindness, forgiveness? And then do more of that. Friends, those who love themselves and those who are most able to love others, love God. Amen. At this time, we are going to reaffirm our mission statement. For the progressive boys and working hands, we are called to feed Christ's community in mind, body, and spirit. Are there any prayer requests this morning? I know a lot of people don't like to be put on the spot, but yes. Thank you for sharing. Any others? Yes. I have three different friends who are all ill for the next two weeks and just thanks for their faith and the joy of that thing. And one of those friends, her her young son recently had a seizure, so it's five to hear her and another one is separate weeks. So that is not one. So thank you for sharing. Any others? Are there any online? Okay. Wonderful. Please bow your heads with me and pray. Lord, we come before you today with humble hearts and open minds. We ask that you meet us in those places where we aren't even sure we are ready to be yet. Find our sore spots and heal them find our worries and relieve them. Lord, we pray for Kate as she goes on to marry Freebread after brain surgery. Lord, her family wants her home soon. Lord, we pray for pregnant people 
and that they have smooth and joyous events in the birth and deliveries of their children. God, we pray for pet moms and dads. We ask for prayers for comfort and strength as they make the hard decisions. We especially pray for Deborah and for Schroeder. We pray for those who are addicted, for the infirmed, for those dealing with loss and grief or struggling with forgiveness. We also pray for our first responders, police and firefighters, doctors, nurses, and others who keep us healthy and safe. We pray for those who are facing complicated diagnosis and for families that are caring for the sick and the in need. God, every day we come before you and we wake up. You know the desires of our hearts and our concerns. We ask you to meet us there in those unspoken places. Help us find healing, peace, comfort, and care. Even on those days, we're not sure it's even there. God, we ask all of this using the prayer that you've taught us, saying, Our God, who is in heaven, blessed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Save us from the time of trial, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and glory forever. Amen.
We thank you, God. You are our soil, our food, our water, and our sun. Everything we need to grow. We offer these gifts to you, asking for your direction as we work each day so that your kingdom of light becomes more and more of a new reality. Amen. Our last hymn is number 31, All Things Bright and Beautiful. Please join me in the common commission found in your bulletin. Shalom to you now. Shalom, my friends. Oh, she is? Oh, it's a song? I thought we read the bold print. Go in peace to love and serve. We go in the name of Christ. Amen.